Preparedness for EMS providers during the COVID-19 pandemic means having the proper personal protective equipment, PPE, and knowledge of how to take PPE on and off correctly. This course will go over in detail the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, PPE recommendations for first responders. Please note that PPE such as gowns and N95 respirators should always be reserved for first responders and medical professionals. By the end of this course, you will be able to identify which PPE items are recommended by the CDC when responding to calls for possible cases of COVID-19, demonstrate how to properly don all necessary PPE, Recall how to properly doff all necessary PPE. When responding to patients with a potential COVID-19 infection, the following PPE is recommended. An N95 or higher level respirator, or if respirator is unavailable, a face mask. Disposable patient examination gloves, eye protection, isolation gown. Other necessary items may include an alcohol-based hand rub, EPA-approved disinfectant wipes, waist container. First responders should refrain from touching their faces and never adjust PPE after it is donned. PPE recommendations extend to EMS drivers providing direct patient care, such as moving patients onto stretchers or into the ambulance. The type of PPE available may vary based on different facilities. Be sure PPE provides protection for the anticipated task. Staff should be trained on how to correctly use PPE, and PPE should always fit well, not restrict movements, and be as durable as possible. Proper eye protection consists of goggles or disposable face shields that fully cover the front and sides of the face. Eyeglasses and contact lenses are not considered appropriate eye protection. For situations that present an aerosol-generating procedure, if available, N95 respirators or respirators of a higher level of protection should be used instead of a face mask. Please note, the use of aerosol-generating procedures has been shown to greatly increase the spread of the virus. During this time, many medical directors have recommended discontinuing the use of both CPAP and nebulizer medications when treating a patient with a suspected COVID-19 infection. Alternative treatment modalities, in accordance with your local medical protocols, may include the use of subcutaneous epinephrine, magnesium sulfate infusion, or quite simply just administering oxygen with a surgical mask placed onto the patient and over the nasal cannula or non-rebreather mask coupled with rapid transport to an appropriate facility. If there is a shortage of gowns, gowns should be reserved for actions that create high contact with patients, care activities that may produce sprays or splashes, or aerosol-generating procedures. When you walk in at the start of your shift, know where your gear is, ensure that it is rapidly accessible when the call comes in, and have a plan for when and how to put it on. PPE should always be donned in a space where it is safe for personnel to be without PPE as well. With that in mind, follow these initial steps when donning PPE. Hair, nails, and jewelry. To ensure that PPE fits properly and does not tear, be sure to remove all jewelry, trim nails to a short length, tie back long hair, and shave facial hair. Gather PPE items. Gather all necessary PPE items from wherever they are stored into one location. This helps ensure all PPE is donned prior to approaching the patient care area. Check PPE. Go over every item to ensure it is in excellent condition. Make sure there are no tears or defects. Be sure to look for small rips in masks or gowns. Please review and download the CDC's recommendations for donning PPE here. Proper donning of PPE occurs in the following order. 1. Sanitize hands. 2. Put on isolation gown. 
3. Place N95 mask, higher level if available, face mask if no N95 mask available, over mouth and nose. 4. Put goggles or face shield over face and eyes. 5. Perform hand hygiene again and put on gloves. 6. Enter the patient care area. Follow these steps for each phase of the PPE donning. Gowns. Sanitize hands and check that the gown has no tears or defects. Make sure the gown is appropriate for the level of anticipated isolation. Make sure all ties on the gown are tied securely, according to the manufacturer's recommendations. This may require the assistance of another first responder or healthcare professional. Respirator and masks. After the gown is securely on the body, don the N95 respirator, or if unavailable, a face mask. The top strap of the respirator should be placed on the crown of the head with the bottom strap on the base of the neck below the ears. The straps should not be crisscrossed. If the respirator has a nose piece, use your fingers to fit it properly without bending or tenting the respirator. Be sure not to pinch the nose piece. The entire nose and mouth should always be protected, and the respirator should extend under the chin. Be sure to check the seal of the respirator each time it is donned. This can be done by inhaling and exhaling quickly as you feel for leaks around the edges of the mask with your hands. When between patients, never take a respirator off and rest it under your chin or in your pockets. Never adjust the respirator with your hands while in a patient care area. Face Shield and Goggles For face and eye protection, it is recommended that a face shield rest comfortably on the forehead. Goggles should fit comfortably over the eyes. Neither goggles nor a face shield should interfere with a respirator. If at any time your face shield begins to fog up, that is a sign your respirator may not have a proper seal. The face shield or goggles must fit comfortably over your personal eyeglasses. Gloves. Perform hand hygiene again before donning gloves. Gloves should cover the wrist of the gown and be comfortable enough to provide all tasks associated with patient care. Make sure no skin is exposed between the glove and gown. Some clinicians find it beneficial to wear two sets of gloves. This allows the rescuer to shed one pair as needed during the event. Hand hygiene then follows with an alcohol-based product and a second set is again reapplied. The donning and doffing of gloves should be practiced before it is implemented during an event. In all instances, be aware and be deliberate by limiting the touching of surfaces around a patient care area. PPE should always be taken off in a safe location where contamination risk is minimized. There is more than one way to doff PPE equipment. Your facility should have a procedure in place and offer ample training and practice. Here are recommended doffing protocols from the CDC. However, note that anyone at a facility that is practicing reuse or extended use of PPE will need to adjust these practices to accommodate their facility's protocol. Remove gloves. Gloves can be removed a number of ways. The glove-to-glove -glove technique is a common method. It can be done by pinching the glove at the wrist with your opposite hand and then pulling the glove over the top of your hand and inside out. Hold the removed glove in your gloved hand and then push your index finger under the remaining gloved hand, pulling off the glove slowly so it turns inside out as well. The bird beak removal method can also be used. In this method, pinch and pull the wrist of one glove. Then use your finger to scoop the wrist of the glove inside out and pull over the fingers, creating a beak. With your beaked hand, grab the wrist of the other, gloved hand, and pull the glove off. Always place gloves safely in the trash. Never throw or toss them inside. Remove gown. To remove a gown, untie all ties, or if your gown has buttons, unsnap all the buttons. If your gown's ties need to be broken rather than untied, do so as gently as possible, minimizing heavy or forceful movements. 
After the gown is untied, reach up to the shoulders and pull the gown down and away from the body. It's also okay to roll the gown down, place the gown in the trash, perform hand hygiene. Remove goggles or face shield. While bending forward slightly, grab the back of the shield or goggles strap and pull the hand up over the head and away from the face. Be careful not to touch the front of the shield or goggles. Place in the trash. Remove respirator or mask. Be sure not to touch the front of the respirator or mask. First, touch only the bottom strap of the N95 mask, slowly bringing it overhead. Grab the top strap next, carefully pulling it over the head as well. Using the strap as a guide, gently pull the respirator or mask away from your face, still without touching the front of the respirator or mask. Place the respirator in the trash. For face masks, carefully untie, gently pull away from the face, and place in the trash, careful to never touch the front of the mask. Always thoroughly sanitize your hands after removing a mask or respirator. If potentially contaminated, a first responder can become contaminated during the doffing process in a number of ways. Inadvertently touching the face or eyes, a respirator coming off too quickly, or by any number of other missteps, can lead to exposure. If at any point in the doffing process, a first responder feels as though he or she has been contaminated, notify your supervisor immediately and follow local protocols. This course has discussed in detail critical information for first responders who may have to respond to calls that potentially involve cases of COVID-19. Please review any topics you feel were most important. Always refer to CDC guidelines for more information, and always remember to follow all local protocols that may be in place.